fish right at 10 o'clock going right about 45 feet for the right there oh yeah How do you start a painting? Go fishing. Experience the awe. See the fish, the land, and seascape. Take notes with your mind, camera, or sketchbook. Gather all the information you can in every way you can. Look at what other artists have painted about the subject. What inspires you about their work, and why? How can you take that idea or inspiration and make it your own? Talk to your guide, to other anglers. What excites them? What stays in their mind? There are three kinds of painting in narrative sporting art. The first is a painting of anticipation, an angler casting to a permit coming across the flat, or an angler starting his cast and the guide positioning the boat. The second kind of painting is the frozen moment when time seems to stop and the image is etched into your mind. It is the first massive jump of the tarpon, the rod pointed to the fish and line flying around. With bonefish or redfish, it can be the angler with the rod raised high and the fish screaming off the flat, or a redfish exploding in the grass on a cloudy morning. The third is the painting of reflection. This is the quiet time at the end of the day with the angler against the sunset or releasing a fish. These are all paintings of different subjects with different moods. There are also artistic problems to solve in designing a painting. In a saltwater painting, you have a flat horizon. If it is high on the canvas, you're looking at the water. If the horizon is in the lower part of the canvas, you're looking at the sky. You then have the subjects of fish, angler, boat, and landscape to create the depth of the painting. There's an old quotation by John Hart about his cartoon strip B.C. Basically, he said that with a B.C. cartoon, you only have three lines, so you better get them right. The amount of detail is always an important question. Too much detail will stop your eye. We can't see what a camera can. I want the viewer to feel the power and motion of the scene. Therefore, some areas of the painting must be loosely painted to move your eye past them. I need to focus the details so I can move the viewer's eye into the painting. The question of detail is at the core of narrative painting. The cameras remove the need to record history with paintings. Now the camera is so advanced it can show us more than we can see ourselves. That moment totally frozen in time and detail is a great photograph. But is it a great painting? Further, all of the concerns of dynamic points, color mixing, color harmony, also have to go into a painting. Is the painting of one of anticipation, the frozen moment, or reflection? How much hard edge detail are we using, and where? Is it a painting of water or sky? What will present the story best? What is the color scheme, and what mood are we trying to present? Is the light reflected or transmitted? And how does it define the subject? I start with my photo file that I've shot and gathered for 40 years and see what excites me. I have thousands of pictures and I pick through them fairly carefully until I have a subject or parts of a subject that excite me. The photos are my departure point. I then start to draw to develop ideas and put parts of a picture together to make a statement. Subject mood, composition, dynamic points are my initial concerns. 
I may do small sketches combining several elements from different photographs. Then I move on to a fairly rendered drawing that I will use as a guide through the photographs to the oil on canvas. To start the painting, I form stretcher bars, stretching a canvas to the correct proportions, and then I paint the entire canvas with cadmium yellow deep. This has a value of about 4 on a scale 0 being white and 10 being black. Once this thin, smooth surface is dried, I start to paint the scene with a lizard crimson, violet, or burnt sienna in a thin wash. I slowly develop the entire painting in this monochromatic underpainting. I solve all the value problems in this manner. My darkest darks are my near verticals. My lightest lights are my sky and horizontals. Once complete, I have a full value study of my painting in violet to yellow. Next, I start to add color. I may start at the horizon and work forward, or I may go to the dark colors in the foreground and work to the lights. I paint thin to thick using a fair amount of medium. I mix paint with two complementary colors on my palette with titanium white. My palette is composed of two yellows, one cool, cadmium yellow lemon, and one warm, cadmium yellow light. I also have an earth tone of yellow ochre. My reds are cadmium red light for warm and alizarin crimson for cool. My earth tone red is burnt sienna. My blues are cerulean or cobalt for warm and ultramarine for cool. I rarely use black. Titanium white completes my palette. The light colors start on the left side of the palette and move progressively towards the darker on the right. I have odorless turpentine in two jars, one clean, one not, and a jar of medium on the right side of my palette. By mixing my paint with medium, I develop a translucent color over the underpainting. It is a slow process, but it creates a luminosity that I am seeking. I often use projection to place the subject to see the color I have to mix. I hold a white card in front of the canvas. To those of you who are shocked by this, I recommend the movie Tim's Vermeer by Tim Jennison. I also ask if you write with a goose quill pen and a bottle of India ink or whether you type on a computer to produce your work. This staining, glazing, painting process continues until the painting is completed for the first time. Then I look and decide what works and what doesn't. And I take a broad brush in my medium and a small amount of neutral color, usually composed of two opposing complementary colors, and glaze down or out the offensive areas. I can also bring up an area with pure, rich colors, intense and less medium. This is a form of final editing that goes on in most creative processes, whether writing, acting, or producing film. Pablo Picasso said he would take each idea and work it to its destruction, and that in the end, the painting was the sum of its destructions. But all this is process, or how I work. The real artistic question is what I say and why I say it. If I have a failing in my work, it is that I've never tried to make art that inflamed or shocked the viewer. I've never raised the lid on the garbage can and looked inside. I have always shown the best of our sports and tried to inspire the viewer. This attitude has been forged by an early passion for the outdoors and the sporting tradition that I was privileged to see growing up. I continue to exercise and enjoy that passion today as I near 70. Whether creating pure abstract sculpture or highly rendered narrative drawing or painting, I have tried to inspire and present the beauty of light, motion, and movement. A.B. Frost said he painted to show half the people in the city how the other half lived in the country. I feel that percentage and knowledge is now closer to 95 to 5. I think there's too much looking inside the garbage can. I prefer to reflect on the horizon and the far-off hills. <laughs>